Have you ever wanted to do Scourge of the Past, but you don't have a full group of six? Do you just want to give yourself a challenge in the raid? Maybe you're just curious how we did it. Whatever your reasons are, you clicked on this video, so sit back, grab some popcorn, and enjoy. Hey, what's up guys? If we're meeting for the first time, I'm Marshix, and it's my main goal to inform Destiny 2 players, such as yourself, of easy and efficient ways to overcome whatever challenge you might be facing. If you find yourself enjoying this video, I would really appreciate it if you leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more content in the future. Also, I would like to give a shout out to Soundswipe and Playa for helping me get the footage for this video. Soundswipe also streams on Twitch, and he also has a YouTube channel, so I'll go ahead and link those in the description if you want to check him out. First off, I'm going to assume you have a basic understanding of the Scourge of the Past encounters. If you need to learn the normal strats, I will leave a link to Rick Kakis's Scourge of the Past for Dummies video. Okay, now let's get into the three-man. Warlocks are necessary for the final encounter of this run, but throughout the first three encounters, you can really run basically whatever class you want to. Warlocks are still best though for the movement with the Top Tree Dawnblade and having the ability to heal yourself, as well as transversive steps to increase sprint speed. A weapon I would recommend throughout this run is the Last Hope. Any Last Hope will do, even the year one static roll. The reason this gun is so good is because it can solo the Berserkers. Watch, I can break his first pack, and then if I keep shooting in the middle of his chest, it'll break the other one too. I used to think this was because of the ricochet rounds, but as you can clearly see in this clip, I don't have ricochet rounds and it still broke a shield. There's actually a few sidearms that can do this, but it's not a lot. I only know of Last Hope, Eulogy, Last of the Legion, and Dead Man Walking. I would encourage you guys to test other guns too, and leave them in the description. First encounter. What many people don't know is that the decoy berserkers aren't completely useless. When I say decoy, I mean the berserkers that don't have the circle above them on the map. These always drop a single ball, and it will always be for the home, or map, whatever you want to call it. During this run, we're going to be utilizing this to give us enough time to wait out our ionized timers. You probably know the correct berserker drops two balls every time. But what if I told you you can know which ball is which without looking at the map? It's actually pretty easy. When you kill him, the two balls will drop out of his shoulders. The one on the left will always be for home, and the one on the right will always be for whichever area you need to go to. You'll still need to read the map to determine which number you go to, but this strategy lets the runners have dedicated roles. For instance, one person always gets map, and the other person always goes to the point. Okay, to start off the encounter, we need to split up into two teams a map reader, and two runners. The reader starts the encounter by placing the first ball at map. As soon as the first berserker comes up, the two runners need to head straight towards it and kill it. The runners pick up the balls, and the reader tells them which points to go to. The reader then goes straight to the point and helps clear out the servitor so the runner can place the ball. The runner who had the home ball is now the new reader. That person tells the other two where the closest decoy berserker is. Once again, that is any of the berserkers with the circle not above them on the map. They kill that guy, and the original reader grabs the ball and heads back to map. The original runners head to the correct berserker. Go ahead and break a shield, but don't kill him until your ionized timers are almost gone, otherwise you won't be able to pick up the balls and you waste a lot of time. At that point, you just rinse and repeat. Kill that one, swap readers, dunk the ball, kill a decoy, swap readers back, runners kill the correct one. You just do that until you place four balls at the outside points. In total, you should be killing seven berserkers four real ones, and three decoys. It's actually a really simple encounter once everyone gets the hang of it. Because we're killing the decoys, we don't have to worry too much about time. Oftentimes we'll go too fast and have to wait up to a minute before killing the berserkers. One more thing to mention, after placing each ball at the point, there will be a servitor that spawns at the home plate. Just make sure you kill that before leaving it alone. Otherwise, whenever someone's trying to place their ball at home, they'll have to kill the servitor themselves. Now that we're done with the first encounter, just drop down one of the tunnels and grab your loot. I hope you know your way through the tunnel because I can't help you too much. I usually just wander around until I see this box and then the exits past that on the left. The second encounter is the Sparrow Race. The strategy is the exact same as any other six-man team. You can still easily grab all the buttons with three people. In fact, you can do this with only two people. If you're looking to get the Fallen mods or the Exotic Sparrow, you're going to want to get the buttons or else you just won't get loot. If you want to learn how to farm this encounter with just two people, without losing your checkpoint every week, I'll link my next video in the top right corner of your screen. 
as well as leave a link to it in the description whenever it comes out. The third encounter is very similar to the six man strategy. This time you need to split into two teams again, one top and two underneath. The two underneath each need to punch one of the symbols and survive. Once they get their symbols, the top person kills the servitor to reset the symbols. And then the two underneath run around to get their matching symbol. Once they both get their symbols, the top kills the servitor again, and the two runners go to whichever points are closest to spawn the tanks. The two people in the tank should use their rocket barrages at the same time, because this adds on extra damage. Once the tanks run out, the two runners should go back under and rinse and repeat. This should only take about three damage phases to complete. The person on top should try and take out as many shanks as they can, but obviously it's very difficult to stop all of them. So the runners are just going to have to deal with a lot of shanks. To help with this, I would suggest running Bottom Tree Voidwalker with Tractor Cannon. Just proc Devour and every kill will heal you completely. I use Tractor Cannon because 1. It's a shotgun, 2. You barely have to aim, and 3. It gives you a slight movement speed increase. The person on top should use something that can kill the giant servitors very quickly. If you have Anarchy, you should be able to just two-shot these guys, but really, most power weapons should get the job done. Once you complete that encounter, go back to where you came from and get your loot. The fourth and final encounter is by far the hardest, so don't get too upset if it takes you a while to get it down. For loadouts, everyone needs Whisper of the Worm with the Catalyst. You will also need a Sniper that takes special ammo. I like to use Last Hope as my other weapon to try and solo the Berserker shields, but if you're really risky, you can run double special weapons, a Sniper and a Shotgun. If you have Fallen Armaments, 100% use it. Don't be too upset if you don't have it, but you'll have to rely on a lot of heavy ammo drops. We did manage to kill him, but as you can see in the background footage, I don't have Fallen Armaments. Bungie, please, it's been over a year. Everyone also needs to run Well of Radiance. You may want to have someone swap to Bubble Titan to increase damage, but we weren't having trouble with damage. A couple more things before we get into the strategy. You definitely want any sniper mods you can get on your armor. Sniper Scavengers, Sniper Reserves, Ammo Finders, Reload, basically anything sniper related. You also want at minimum 4 Intellect to make sure you get your well back for every damage phase. If possible, I would probably use more just to be safe. Okay, now we can get into the strategy. We need to start off by having one person stand at 1, or the top of the map, whatever you want to call this area. The other two need to stay at map. One person at map needs to be the runner, and the other is the reader. The reader picks up the first ball to start the encounter. As soon as the boss comes up, call out the berserker spot, then try to shoot as many of the blue packs as you can. You may notice Sound is standing to the left of the boss when he comes up. This is so we can quickly get the pack under his armpit. That's probably the hardest one to hit when you're doing this strategy. Once his first red pack comes up, shoot it. We call these his time extenders, so that's what I'm going to be referring to them for the rest of the video. As soon as you shoot his first time extender, the two runners go to the first berserker location. Break his shield, then have one person drive up to one, and either shoot his time extender or take his aggro and let the map guy shoot it. Immediately go back and pick up the orbs, and have the reader call out where the balls go. Whichever runner is closest to one goes there, and the other goes to the map. At this point, you just have to wait out the ionized timer and shoot any remaining blue packs and every time extender that comes up. You can also kill any nearby adds to try and get ammo. Make sure you call out the next berserker location, then whenever the person with the longest timer is around 30 seconds, wait for the next time extender to spawn, then book it to the next berserker. Break his shields just like before, then have one of the runners go to one and shoot his time extender. The runners pick up the orbs and the reader calls them out. If neither one of the orbs is for one, the map reader should go to one and grab the tank. The tank at one will almost always have a line of sight to the boss, so you should be able to get in and start damage phase right away. It doesn't matter where the damage phase happens, each person just needs to drop their own well and start unloading Whisper. Make sure you proc Whispered Breathing for the extra damage. If you run out of Whisper ammo, just swap to your other sniper, but make sure you don't run out of ammo for that one so you can still shoot the time extenders right after. You may be thinking you can stack the CAP buffs during damage, but the way it assigns the buffs doesn't allow two people to get the same one. It will always check to make sure there are three different buffs before assigning any duplicates. As long as you stay in your well, you shouldn't have to worry about dying, but you will have to deal with a lot of flinch from the snipers. The only thing I can tell you is that one person can get right up in his face, and the others can try and stay close to any nearby walls to minimize getting shot. If you can space it out correctly, you can have two people in his face, but it can sometimes be a chaotic DPS phase, so you might not want to throw in an extra factor. When the damage phase is over, just rinse and repeat, shoot packs, leave after the first time extender, break the berserker shield, shoot extender, 
pick up orbs, shoot extender, wait out timer, shoot packs, go to berserker and break shields, shoot extender, grab orbs, grab tank, start damage. Hopefully you do at least a fourth of his health each time. It's definitely possible to do a third of his health and complete this in three phases, but you need maximum whisper ammo every time. We ended up killing him in four phases because two of us didn't have fallen armaments. He becomes enraged after four phases, so you can't slack on damage. I know this may seem complicated, but once you get in there, it's pretty easy to get a hang of it. Keep in mind you aren't going to get it right away. It's going to take practice. When you do manage to kill him, drop down the center of the arena and hopefully claim your anarchy. And then post on Twitter bragging about how you three-man scourge of the past. Is there anything you would change in your strategy? Is there anything I didn't explain? Let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer any questions I get. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope you attempt it for yourself. I would like to thank you all for watching. I'm Marshix and I'll see you next time. Thank you.